As you know, this passion fruit has been a huge blessing for us. This one vine has provided privacy on this back fence. It's provided beautiful foliage and flowers and hundreds and hundreds of tasty fruit. So you can imagine my devastation when I found that our passion fruit vine has been overrun by these things. What are these things? I'm Cameron, welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. In this video, we're gonna figure out what we've got going on here and what we need to do about it. Let's get busy. Hello, I am the busy gardener. You kill my garden, prepare to die. Hello, my name is the busy gardener. You kill my garden, prepare to die. Hello, I am the busy gardener. You kill my garden, prepare to die. Well, before the video goes on any further, why don't you stop and let me know what kind of pests have you been dealing with in your orchard or garden and how's it been going? I'd be curious to compare notes with you. And I plan to post updates on how this goes. And so if you don't wanna miss out, be sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button and the notification bell so you can see how this goes. Passion fruit is a tropical fruit that grows mainly in places where you can grow avocado or mango or citrus. And so when I was looking for something to plant on this fence, I knew that I wanted something that was evergreen, that was beautiful, and that was edible. And the passion fruit fit all three of those. It's got this dark green, when it's healthy, vine that's going. It puts out these gorgeous passion flowers, which are really an amazing thing in terms of the structure that's there. And then those culminate in this amazing fruit. I'd never even had a passion fruit before planting this. And so I was really surprised to find that I like them. Not everybody in my family does. My wife doesn't like them, but passion fruit is fantastic in terms of being able to cut it open and the seeds on the inside can be either eaten with a spoon or put on top of some sort of tart or used in some sort of drink, or you can squeeze and strain some juice out of it. Although these aren't very juicy, they're kind of more gelatinous than they are juicy. And up until this point, the passion fruit has been one of the huge successes in this yard. And so when I saw it struggling, I didn't know quite what was going on until we started noticing these little creatures on the leaves and thought, what are those things? I noticed a couple were on my citrus, but mainly on the passion fruit. And they reminded me a lot of those little Bowser shells inside Mario Kart. And so we started looking and saying, okay, what, what have we got going on here? And it took a little bit of time to hunt around because I didn't know quite what I was looking for. Are you looking for spiky bugs on passion fruit? Are you looking for little black bugs with white spikes on them? And so through searching and narrowing it down, I discovered that we are dealing with a scaly insect. I also checked my passion fruit on the other side because I've got them on two different sides of the fence and thankfully nothing was happening on that passion fruit either. So these scale insects are stuck just on this one plant, even though it's a whole bunch of the fence work. Once I knew that I was dealing with some sort of insect, I wanted to make sure that it hadn't infested any of the other plants around because there are a lot of things that are planted right next door to these guys, such as my citrus and my bananas and my avocados. And I saw a few of those things hanging out on the lemon tree over here, but nothing to the scale of which I saw on this one passion fruit. Okay, so looking at our citrus right in front of where that passion fruit is over there, I can see that some of these have gotten infested a little bit. This is my Pomona sweet lemon, and this has these little nasty guys on here. But most of the foliage on this plant is really clean and it's, it's easy to spot and It hasn't been overrun by any stretch and yeah, I can't even tell if, oh yeah, here are some on here too. This is a very, very light infestation of really young bugs. And so coming through with rubbing alcohol on the backs of these guys or spraying with some sort of insecticidal soap or horticultural oil can make a big difference. Now it turns out that there are two types of scale insects. One is a hard shell and the other is a soft shell. I don't remember, one of them may be called waxy, but the point is, is that there are ways to deal with these scale insects 
Ideally, when it's a young infestation and ideally when it's a small infestation, neither of which is the case in my case. There are a couple of approaches of attack when it comes to dealing with scaly insect infestation, and it largely has to do with whether or not they're a soft shell or a hard shell scaly insect, and it also has to do with where in their growth and life cycle you're catching them. Ideally, you've got a very minimal infestation and you've got them in the little crawler stage, they call it, and that's when they're actually going out and looking for some place to sink their teeth and to destroy your plants. But that also makes them very susceptible to things like horticultural oil, which can help to smother them or their eggs. Or if you catch them before they even hatch in just that overwintering mode, when they're on the underside of the leaves in term and their eggs, and you can just smother them with an oil. Or if they're in that crawler stage, you can generally get them with either some rubbing alcohol on their backs or flicking them off with your finger or taking and spraying them with some insecticidal soap. All of those things can work unless they're fully established and grown. Once they get out of that crawly stage, they latch themselves on and they begin sucking the life out of your plant. Then they begin reproducing and it starts all over again. When you're dealing with a mature and very heavy infestation, really the only way to get rid of that is with these. There's no feasible way for me to go through and physically pop off the many thousands of bugs that are on this plant, nor are they gonna be affected by anything that I spray on them. And I'm reluctant to spray that much stuff onto these just to get a dying plant another shot. So where does that leave me? With a few steps. First is I need to go through and prune off this entire plant. All 45 beautiful feet of it have to come off of the fence. And I'm gonna make sure to not put this in any sort of compost pile or keep it on premises. I'm gonna take this thing and I'm gonna throw it in the green waste bin and have it sent far, far away. The second is I'm gonna take from the healthy plant over there a few cuttings and I'm gonna propagate those cuttings using the methods that I learned from Charles Malky. I'll link to that video in the description below so that way you can check out how to propagate your plants and passion fruit cuttings. The third thing I'm gonna do is treat the nearby plants to make sure that any of the little crawlers that are on there don't find purchase on my citrus or on my banana or my avocados or anywhere else in this orchard that they wanna set up. Ready to go with me? Let's go. So we figured out what the issue is with this passion fruit and the question now is where do we go from here? Do we plant the exact same thing that we had up there or do we try something new? I mean, we've been happy with passion fruit for the last two, three years, whatever it's been, but maybe it's time to try something new, something that isn't susceptible to these things. I think what we're going to do is to replace this existing plant after we remove the entire thing, as difficult as that's going to be, and we're gonna replace it with the same kind of passion fruit um, that we've taken from the other one. We know that Frederick tastes good. We know that we've been happy with how it's grown. And so we're propagating three, maybe four of these plants. And we're gonna plant two of them. I think the original planting came with two vines that came up and we're able to fill up this entire fence. So really pleased with that. We've still got some work ahead of us. We need to remove the rest of this vine. We need to allow those propagated plants to grow and be ready to go in in its place. And then we need to just hunt around and make sure that none of the other plants around here have been affected by the same issue. I'm gonna link right here to a video I did on how to best spray your fruit trees, as well as a playlist on how to deal with pests in your orchard and garden. Until next time, stay busy.